All right, so if you watched the previous video, we took a look at this Alienware. It's the ASM 100-6980-BLK. And this one was the one with the i7, 4th uh, gen, 8 gigs of RAM, 100 gig mechanical hard drive, and has that 2 gig of DDR5, pretty much equivalent of a, 860, a GTX 860M, which are more commonly found in laptops. Now, using this, we found out that it was very buggy. It was very glitchy. Uh, the performance wasn't there as far as just the user experience for it and because of the lack of the support for the Steam OS a lot of games didn't load even though it said it was compatibility for it uh, we could not play Counter-Strike we could not play Shadow of the Tomb Raider just because the games would not even load it wouldn't even give me a chance to go in and get whatever horrible frames that this thing may or may not have so it was pretty much a bad experience and then you're just like I said you're limited on the games you can use you can't even play most modern, uh, modern game titles Plus, if you wanted to go to Epic Games and just play like Fortnite, other stuff like that, you're not going to be able to do this. The Steam OS is pretty much abandoned and not good for this, and it's kind of a shame. Considering the specs are somewhat decent and the portability size, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into the gaming computer that it should have been and make this thing a lot smoother. So what are we going to do? We're going to take this and we're going to put a solid state drive in there. I know this one says 240, but um, I'm actually going to put a 512 gig solid state drive. I actually decided that last minute. And that should give us more than enough space to install Windows on it and get a decent amount of games on there and get a somewhat decent gaming experience. The solid state drive in itself is really going to help boost performance and the load because one of the things about this was that when we were booting it up, it took a little bit to boot up and just loading things, which is very delayed and... That's just typical of mechanical hard drives nowadays. We're going to add some RAM into it. We're going to upgrade the RAM. That will help it a lot. And the Achilles heel that I have found, and it's actually one of the reasons why you can find these things cheap because some people don't know about it or are just afraid to do this repair, we're going to replace the CMOS battery on it. Now, these batteries are only like 2 or $3. I got this one on Amazon. And it's actually underneath the bottom, and it's a little invasive as far as repairing it you got to take the whole thing apart but we're going to do a kind of a mostly step-by-step -step guide of how to replace the battery put a mechan uh, put a solid star state hard drive in there upgrade the ram we're also going to clean the thermal paste on it just to make sure this thing it has decent cooling efficiency install windows 10 do some performance and then really give this thing a good rating of if it's a good gaming computer almost five six years later so let's switch cameras angles and let's take this thing apart all right, so first thing you want to do, flip this thing upside down, and you're going to find four holes over here. Now, if you're going to use one of these toolkits like iFixit, uh, you're going to run into the issue that the whole shaft thing over here is a little too thick, and it's not going to fit in those holes. So uh, this is a Be Quiet screwdriver that I get from the CPU coolers that I buy from them, and it's long enough, and it's thin enough that we can get it in and unscrew it, and it's a Phillips number two. So take out these four screws right over here. These are what the screws look like. All right, and that's pretty much it. So then the next thing you want to do is you want to kind of pry your finger into this little crevice over here. We can actually use one of the picks from the uh, iFixit toolkit and kind of just separate this real quick. So if you notice, if we start pulling, it comes apart, and there you go. So we didn't have to use that, and this pops out really easy. And in fact, it came out the other way than planned. So now let's keep prying and pulling. Just nice and easy. You're really not going to break anything with this, I have found. And we should be able to separate the top cover. There's no screws holding it. And let's see if we can get that in the camera angle. There we go, like that. And just kind of lift a little forward over here on the front. And this thing should pop out very simple. And now this thing is totally apart. Very simple, very easy. So now the next thing I would recommend doing, and um, I'll do this off camera, is take an air duster and just go ahead and blow out these fans and these heat sinks. I know this computer does have a little bit of dust in it. And that would kind of help the fans just to be a lot cleaner, maybe get rid of some noises or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to blow this out real quick. When we come back, we'll start taking this apart. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do to tackle this is that we're actually going to take this completely all the way down and tear it apart. So to remove the heat sink and GPU fans, just squeeze these two little tabs and they pop right off. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just kind of wiggle these connectors out. Hopefully they come out easy. There we go. And we're going to take these out. They're labeled, and all it is is just two little tabs. Squeeze them out. And they're pretty much done. So let's pull these out, and let's put these to the side. We already had, went ahead and just blew these out. And then the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to start unplugging all these little 
cables and ribbons over here. And what we're going to go tackle first is we're going to actually tackle changing the CMOS battery. And then once we have that done, we'll put everything back together. We'll change the heat sinks, uh, the thermal paste, change the memory, add the hard drive, and it'll be a lot easier flowing process. So let's get these cables all the way out. All right, so we got everything unplugged. So let's go ahead and let's start taking out all these screws. Over here, there's one, two, three, four, and the heat sink screws and everything. So take off all the screws on the board. All right, so we're gonna, ch uh, we're gonna change this later in the thermal paste and all that, but I just wanna take a look at the thermal pads. They're actually still pretty nice and pliable, spongy. They don't look terrible, but as you can see, our thermal paste is just dried up and dusty. So this definitely affects cooling efficiency and we are gonna replace the thermal paste. So we're just gonna put this to the side right over here and we'll take off the CPU heat sink and it'll probably be the same story on that. Now this is the GPU and it's built into this board. So the limit one of the limitations of this computer is that it's built into the board so you can't upgrade the GPU. Now Alienware does have this thing called a graphics amplifier. It's about $100 for it and it's this big block that plugs in and you can actually put a uh, full-size graphics card into it and then plug it into the ports over here. I hear they work okay, uh, but it's quite pricey and I don't feel like spending the money for it, but that is an option that you do have. All right, and the same thing over here, thermal paste is just dried up. And now another cool thing about it is that it uses a regular CPU, unlike some laptops where the CPU is kind of soldered and you can't upgrade it. So it does have a regular CPU. So if you bought the i3 version of this, you can actually upgrade it to the i5 or the i7. And I have heard that people have gotten away with putting Xeons in here. I don't know. haven't been able to confirm it, but that might be something for you guys to research. So now we're on the back and we're going to take out the hard drive. All this is one screw and it slides right out. This is the case for it. This one is a HGST. 7200 RPM, one terabyte, which the size is good, but it's a mechanical hard drive. It is a limitation in our performance. So we have that removed. Uh, for the instructions I have found, it's just better to remove all the screws on this. So I'm gonna just go ahead and remove all the screws. This does have a thumb drive and I'm not 100% sure what it is, but to me, this looks like a regular USB thumb drive. Obviously, it's USB, but I think this is what has the Steam OS in here. So if the hard drive ever crashes, you can use this to reinstall Steam on it. We're going to leave this in here, even though we're going to be going to Windows 10. And we could just disable that fe well that boot feature and just boot it off the external thumb drive that I will have with Windows 10. And then just leave that in there if we ever decide to go back to Steam OS. All right. So now we just got to take out this one screw over here. There's two more screws over here. I take that back. Over here, there is one screw over here, one screw over there. There's two screws right over here. So let's take these two screws out. So looking on the back, if we take this tab right over here and we push it down, now that comes out. And once that comes out, we have our beautiful prize, our motherboard. All right, here we go. So now, we're at the back and if we look at the back this is the battery and this is what is known to go bad on this motherboard they just wear out and that's typical for batteries so all we're going to do is we're going to replace this and we're going to put it with our new one now how do you know if you have a bad CMOS batteries they call it the yellow ring of death when you boot these things up you get a yellow ring and the computer does not work it does not respond and that's how you know that you need to replace it it is pretty simple. It's nothing too involved or too technical. And all it is is that this thing goes in right over here. Only goes one way. Slide it in. All right. Now while we're back here, we can take a look at the back of the motherboard. Just look at anything. Just And this thing worked fine. There was no issues with it. We're just taking a look at it just to see if we notice anything that looks wonky to be concerned. But other than this going bad, there's really no concerning issues involving these boards or these computers right over here. It's just that goes bad, yellow ring of death. Most times people, when they run into that issue, they throw this out and you can get it for a pretty good deal. So other than that, I'm very happy with it. And this looks pretty good. So let's pop this back in our case right here real quick. 
and then we'll work our way putting it back together. All right, so just off of camera, I just went ahead and I cleaned off all the old thermal paste and everything, just isopropyl alcohol. These shop tiles work great. Just wipe it pretty good. Just, you know, be mindful of the little uh, electronic components around the CPU right over here. This is the GPU and this is the CPU. So I went ahead, installed new thermal paste, cleaned all this up and got the heat sinks installed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our stick of memory, which we already put one in. Let's pop in this other one. And it's real simple, just pop it out, pop it in, nothing to it. All right, and we should be good to go over there. This is our GPU one. Let's start with this one, cause well, I have it right over here. It goes that way, snaps in, all right. Now this one should snap in. All right, all our screws are in, everything's plugged in, so we're golden, we should be good to go. Just double check your connectors, and now let's flip it to the back. All right, so now let's, the hard drive is held with four screws. These are real simple to come out. And one thing I've always enjoyed about upgrading from a mechanical hard drive to a solid state hard drive is the fact that it's quieter. You don't have that spinning disc inside that tends to hum. So that's always been kind of a nice upgrade. My personal rig has a four terabyte in there that I use for video and data. And I have a pretty much silent computer, but that's the only thing that you do here. And four terabytes are not cheap right now for M.2s or SATA. So we'll just have to use that for a while. All right, let's go ahead and grab our hard drive or a solid state. Yeah, this just pops out real easy. Just mark the orientation, remember which way it goes. And this will just pop in right there like that. Just line up the holes, which should be right over here. And once you get one in, they all mostly line up for the most part. All right, so the four screws are in. And then all we gotta do now is just slide this in right over here. There you go. Let's take our last screw. All right, and we're fully upgraded. And we should be ready to go. So I'm just gonna wipe down our interior cover, just get off any little extra dust or dirt that may be over here. Could do a duster, but this wasn't too terrible. And our bottom was pretty much clean for the most part. So it wasn't too bad. Changing the thermal paste, putting a solid state drive in there, memory upgrade, and also changing the battery. We got upgrades and we got peace of mind. So now here's the million dollar question. Does it work or did I totally screw it up? So let's power it on. Let's see my lovely Alien logo. And let's go into the BIOS. All right, Alienware. I think I totally missed the opportunity for the BIOS, but it's okay. All right, so I've went ahead and I've installed Windows already. That was very simple. By pressing F2, you go into the BIOS and then you can set it for your USB thumb drive that has Windows 10 pre-installed. So now we're booted up into Windows 10. And I can tell you right now, that was a lot quicker. Booting up into the Steam OS took a lot longer but booting up into this was way faster. So we've already increased our experience in the fact that it's running like a normal computer. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna install some games on here, update all the drivers, and then we'll do some benchmarks, some tests, and we'll see how this thing performs, and we'll talk about it. All right, so the first game we're gonna try out is Fortnite. We're running 1080p settings, medium, and we're averaging maybe, I would say 45 to 50 frames per second. The experience is actually not too terrible and we got some studies here and there and I'm so sure with some graphics optimization, some other tweaks probably could get this a lot better. But just for the simple fact, I just wanna see how this game runs. This works actually pretty decent. We're using the Steam controller and with the Steam controller, all you have to do is just put the batteries in, hold the button, it's gonna beep on and it works instantly and right away. So compared to like the Xbox controller where you have to like sync it to get it working, this is a lot easier to use. And it's cool because even though we're not using the Steam OS, we're still able to take advantage of this and actually use it in Windows. I just gotta figure out the button configuration. This is just totally different. But as you can see, we're playing it running smooth. The graphics are not too bad. Like I said, medium settings. And compared to what it was with the Steam OS, we actually can play Fortnite compared with Steam OS where we really couldn't get it going, well, it wouldn't run and a lot of games would crash. So I'm gonna play this for a few more minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider and see if that loads because in the last video, it didn't even wanna load at all. All right, so the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this one runs and it loads. And this was something that we were unable to do before 
And when we loaded up on the Steam OS, even though it said it has support for it, it just would not load. And we're not getting the greatest frames per second because there is some graphical limitations because of the 2 gig DDR. I believe it's the equivalent of the 860M graphics cards, but we're still able to play it. I'm running it at 1080p medium settings. We're getting an average about 20 frames per second. It is playable and it is decent. And I'm sure if we lowered the settings to low settings, 1080p low settings, we probably could get closer to the 30 frames per second mark. But overall, we're able to play this game, have no issues, and once again, open up our game library to a game that we weren't able to play before. So I'm going to play this for a few more seconds and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so our Alienware Steam Machine OS Alpha, or whatever how they organized it. This thing is actually a pretty cool little computer. Still has a lot of potential, and even though it's about almost six years old, it still has a lot of juice and means to be able to play some AAA titles. Now, if you want to play the newer ones, I'm sure you're going to run into graphical limitations. You're probably going to have to downplay, uh, lower the graphics to 720p, maybe medium to high settings and you'll be able to get a better experience. But compared to the Steam OS, where we were not able to play all the games that were on the Steam library, and we were not able to load the ones that were able to be played, this is a great improvement. Now we have Windows installed, we can run Netflix, we can run all types of applications, everything we wanna do, even use it as an office PC, and we have more of a purpose for it besides a gaming console. Yes, this was geared towards a console, I would say probably more towards competing with cons consoles at the time, but realistically, you limit yourself. The good consoles are good in the fact that, you know, they're convenient, you don't have to worry about them, but the fact that I have a computer, I think you can get more bang for the buck making this more of a console equivalent, also more of a computer being usable. Now, we spent maybe $50 for the solid state drive, we spent another $2 for the little battery on it, and then another $30 for the memory, and we were able to put a 500 gig solid state drive in here, 16 gigs of DDR3 1600 RAM, and put in the little battery. The little battery is known to be the Achilles heels of this little device, primarily because once that battery goes out, this thing doesn't boot, and you get the little yellow alien of death. Kind of like how Xbox had it with the red ring of death, but we have a little yellow alien of death. The Steam controller, is actually not bad after spending some time with it it's just a learning curve getting used to it but it's not bad and what's kind of cool is about it is once you initiate it you can actually use it in windows and as you can see i'm kind of manipulating the windows thing uh, my youtube thing right over here and it's not too bad it's pretty decent i mean i guess if we put this in the living which it was designed for put it in the living room and set it up as a little home theater you know just sit on the couch use this and enjoy your experience so this is actually not too bad. One thing I will get it on is the fans tend to be a little noisy. I don't know if it's because they're just a little old or maybe the bearings are dried up, but they ramp up pretty decent. So make sure you have good airflow if you're gonna put this in like your uh, home theater type setup. Just don't limit the airflow and I think you'll be fine with it. So comment down below, let me know what you think. Was this the way to go? Getting rid of Steam OS, putting Windows 10 and making this thing more practical? Or do you think we should have played with Steam, Steam OS, learned how to use Linux, and maybe would have had more variety to it? Overall, for the everyday common day user, I believe this is the way to go. And I'm definitely happy with it. And if I was to sell this thing, I know I could actually sell it and get more bang for the buck compared to what it was on the Steam OS. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not. And as always, we're going to see what we come up with next.